You're listening to The South Stands, a Buckeye football podcast by Ohio State fans for Ohio State fans on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, and SoundCloud. TG, what are you drinking? Oh, boy. Water. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dehydration. Dehydration. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, well, I'm sure you were pretty well hydrated during the game uh, yesterday on, on several fronts. Uh, it was coming down pretty good there from what I could tell, TG. Yeah, it was, hey, it was a mess. <laughs> Before we start this uh, podcast, Z, I want to make a bold prediction right now in the NFL. The Browns will beat the Patriots today. Woo! <laughs> All right. <laughs> I made those uh, you watch. Watch. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. You watch it. You watch <laughs> That is a bold proclamation. Oh, boy. I can't stand that team right now. They're just all style over substance. They lead the league in penalties. They just – I mean, I, I'm hoping for the best, but, God, just – you know, the, everything the Buckeyes are, everything that I love about this Ohio State team, the Browns do not have. Uh, anyway, that's another – that's a topic for another day. Or not. Or not, exactly. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> our, uh, our Buckeyes were rather rude hosts – to the Badgers yesterday. Um, why don't we just we'll just keep it casual here? I, I think we kind of all know the stats. I'll kind of reveal some numbers as we go along here. I don't think we I need to lead with any any numbers. We all know what happened yesterday from a statistical standpoint. But Tim, what since you were there, do you want to give me uh, kind of your initial impressions of what you saw? Uh, yeah. So. Uh, uh, few different things really Matt <laughs> Sloner <laughs> <laughs> really Make really Matt show. <laughs> <laughs> I was just giving you some background music for your musings Tim <laughs> yeah <laughs> why don't you mute yourself that's what I'd prefer <laughs> you got it Tim uh, so uh, I, I, I mean, I don't know how it looked on TV, obviously, but it, it was fucking nasty in that stadium. Uh, it was blowing. It was raining. Uh, it wasn't super cold, but with the wind and the rain and being wet, it was it was cold. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, you know, I had flashes in the first quarter of like, oh, my God, is this Michigan State 2015? Is this going to be our Purdue and Iowa game of this year? Um you know the, the the first quarter was was actually the first quarter and a half where it was fairly unsettling, um, just in terms of how you felt the game was going. And you know the weather would it would let up a little bit, and it would only be kind of misting, and then it would kind of pour for like ten minutes, and then it would just be raining a little bit, and then then it would stop, and then it would pour again, and it, it was just this these waves of weather coming in and. You never really got a whole lot of confidence that uh, you know the weather was going to participate and and or cooperate and mm-hmm. you know sort of go away. And then at halftime, it absolutely dumped. Um, <laughs> it, it, it that was the worst of the rain was during halftime. So I, I think you know, and I think watching the other game last night, the Michigan Notre Dame game. I mean, I think it affects different people differently. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I do think it's a bit of a home field advantage. You've got the crowd there and all that. Like if, if you're facing that kind of weather on the road, I, I think it is a, a little bit more difficult for the uh, away team. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I really felt like that touchdown that fields through in the first half to make it uh, 10 zip or whatever it was at the time. Um, I, I felt like that was, to, to put some distance bet- between Ohio State and Wisconsin going into half was huge. Um, you just kind of felt like Wisconsin was hanging around. And i got to tell you, Fields can throw the ball in the rain and in the cold. The guy was throwing perfect spirals to these receivers. K.J. Hill had a drop. Mm-hmm. Um, somebody else had a drop. That Olave had a drop that hit them both. Both hit him right in the hands. Mm-hmm. ball was wet. K.J. Hill, yeah. 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 But it, these were perfect spirals in awful weather um, and on the money. Mm-hmm. So I also was kind of thinking, huh, I wonder how Justin Fields is going to react being a kid from Georgia, just got here in January, probably really never played in you know the cold and uh, the kind of weather he's going to face for the next six weeks of the season. 
Uh, and I thought he responded really well. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, the, it was hard not to watch the, the second half and just be like, well, this is a Chase Young show. I mean, that guy was in the backfield on every single play. Yeah. And his... You know, they're talking about him now as a, potentially being a Heisman candidate. I mean, oh, yeah? and as a defensive player, that is astounding because I think it just never happens where a defensive guy gets that kind of credit, but that's just is how dominating the guy is. Mm-hmm. I mean, we, were, we weren't even really watching the game after a while anymore. We were just watching Chase Young and what he was doing to the poor offensive lineman, whichever side he lined up on, that had to deal with him. Yeah. Uh, and every play, he was beating his man. And so... That was my other big takeaway is you can't really see that on TV because if he's, you know, if he doesn't make a sack, they don't show necessarily what he's doing. But the, the, guy, the guy can't be blocked. Yeah. I mean, certainly in Wisconsin has good offensive linemen, and they couldn't stop him yeah. at all. I mean, not even a little. Mm-hmm. So that was, well, that was the most dominating performance by a defensive player I think I've ever seen. Yeah, he was reminiscent so, here, of, of Indomitian Sioux. Uh, for Nebraska, in my mind, that that was the last time I remember a defensive lineman. Now, granted, he played on the inside, but where he just really dominated the game. Sorry, Paige, were you going to make a point? Yeah, just real quick. At, at one point, Wisconsin's theory was, you know what, just don't fucking block the guy. <laughs> right? You remember that play? Yeah, that was a, like that a, was, a jailbreak that was, screen or something, right? Where they were trying to... Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I mean, that, that just goes to show, to Tim's point, how dominant he is. Like, well, we don't have anybody that can do anything with him, so what if we just don't try and see if we can, <laughs> you, you know, just let him go? That's how just insane that game was by Chase Young. <laughs> Paige, what did you see yesterday that stood out? Well, I mean, all the obvious things. I, you know, I, I think it's hard doing these pods, right? It's just like, God, we just trip all over ourselves. Just, um, you know, just throwing praise on, on this squad, rightfully so. I, I think a few things, though. Uh, number one, I think Landers was bawling yes, in he that was. game. I mean, Chase Young and those guys, you know, big. He, he gets big time. I mean, he was wreaking havoc over and over in the middle. Um, so, so that's one takeaway. I think the other two, um, uh, you know, special teams, we never talk about special teams. I think, you know, outside of that little muff by, uh, Chrisman and, you know, our second possession in the second half, I mean, how good are our special teams? And I think Mm -hmm. even, uh, that punt return by Wilson, Mm -hmm. uh, in the second half was a huge, huge play, right? I mean, I think he caught that ball in the 21, ran it pretty much to midfield with 17 to seven. At that point, we went down and scored that game was effectively over. Uh, I, you know, I, I, I think we just need to see more of Wilson I agree. Uh, returning punts mm-hmm. from now on. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think we kind of texted a little bit about that uh, yesterday. And then sort of the third big point for me, and I know we're going to talk about him is Dobbins, but Dobbins specifically in the passing game. Yeah. How deadly is that? Yeah. He had three, he had three, I think long third down conversions. Yeah. And, you know, he just kind of, you know, he, he sits back there and, you know, he may, he might throw a block or it's a decoy. He just kind of squirts out and, you know, for opposing defenses, like, like you cannot stop everything. No. It's just impossible. Mm-hmm. And so if Dobbins is open, Fields will find him if he needs to check down or he can run. And, you know, what Dobbins did catching the ball, I mean, those three plays really, I think, broke the back of Wisconsin. It, it was just, they were all third and longs. Yeah. That guy, Jesus, he played a hell of a game. He was a nice safety valve for him. And that looked like by design. And, and the combination of, of Fields' ability to keep plays alive, to evade pressure, get out of the pocket. Now, he's looking downfield. If he doesn't see anything downfield, he's got, as you say, the check down to Dobbins. It's got to be so frustrating for an opposing defense. Uh, Mr. Sloan, what did you see yesterday that stood out? Well, I will be, I'll be up front and said I didn't see anything live because I was doing, had a parenting duty and watching the bouncy house for an hour. <laughs> school, school, school fair. <laughs> which never it basically is the job they set, they give to the parent who's the biggest sucker apparently. <laughs> um, so, but watching it on replay, the the thing that really stand, stood out for me, I mean, things that what Paige and Tim's uh, obviously were were huge. But I, you know, the linebacker play. 
I yeah. mean, there's that that first series uh, where there's 33. They go to their bread and butter Taylor, and Harrison stops Taylor. Plug, you know, plug the holes and stops Taylor. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I and I saw that with Werner uh, and Brownie. Even Brownie makes them faster out there. So they were just doing a good job containing uh, his running attack. Uh, the line did an amazing job, but I was really taken by how well and the, how well they've been progressing the linebacker play as a unit. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I like that. They made second half, the other thing we talk about all the time, great adjustments by both the O and the D. I thought that they kind of honed in on what they could exploit and exploited them. I mean, they have they do have the talent to do that, but they used it properly. Mm-hmm. And uh, that was a big difference. And also, uh, you know, we talk about it this all the time, too. Not many penalties and then no turnovers. Yeah, was that's it? what they what they call a clean game. They mm-hmm. played a really clean game, and that makes it hard for a team uh, when it's raining. You know, not doing any turnovers when it's raining and not, and not getting lazy when it because it's wet. Uh, and they showed a lot of discipline on both those fronts. Yeah, yeah. I think two penalties for fifteen yards, if not if I'm not mistaken. Mister Plummer, why don't you tell us what you saw yesterday that stood out? Uh well, you know, those first couple plays there, like first, I think first couple series, I was like, oh man, come on. Like the offensive line, Myers missed a couple huge blocks. I was like, oh, come on guys, let's get this, you know. But uh, I mean, just, I've just continued to be more and more impressed by this team, man. Like I, they're a unit, man. I, I haven't seen an Ohio State team like this in a long time where they're just, I think they're just all gelling so well, you know, I mean, they're talking out there on defense to make, like, I think you guys already uh, alluded to this, and making adjustments and game adjustments that are just fantastic. Um, I wish, I don't know if you guys remember, but I think I spoke to Paige about this yesterday. Um, when Damon Arnett did that Superman leap, yeah. he just missed the quarterback <laughs> yeah. by like three inches. He probably would have cracked his spine in half if he would actually hit him. <laughs> but that was amazing. <laughs> Yeah, and that but, was uh, that was what's his face his uh, best pass of the day. He completed that ball, which was yeah, pretty, no. yeah, that was his best throw of the day. Uh, why am I blanking on his name? The quarterback for Wisconsin, Cone. Cone. That was Cone's uh, best throw of the day, ironically. But th- that was a spectacular yeah. play by Arnett. Yeah, for sure. Your 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 spacing on his name is because he's totally forgettable. That's why. <laughs> He was yesterday. Uh, that's for sure. He didn't do. He didn't do that bad. He threw some really nice passes. I thought he played within his game, but he just wasn't. He's just not a spectacular quarterback. But and he lived nah. up to that bill. Yeah. Well, with Chase with Chase Young bearing down on you with on pretty much every play, <laughs> it's 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 hard to, to be productive. Anyway, Chad, go ahead. Why don't you why don't you tell us more of what you what you saw yesterday? Well, I mean, you know, like Dobbins. You know, you gotta just uh, repeat the obvious of whatever else. And the kid's a beast, man. Mm-hmm. And Fields has got the poise of a fourth year starter at quarterback, yeah. man. It's just, it's crazy. And, uh, you know, I was saying, I was, I saw something on Twitter today, like Garrett Wilson, you know, he's like, somebody said yes. And he is a true freshman. And he was like, you know, thank you, blah, blah, blah. But he goes, like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to take, you know, I got to start taking these to the crib, you know, <laughs> so, like, he's, he's wanting to break one badly. Yeah. Um, and the defense, I mean, what else can I say besides, you know, aside from, what all you guys have been saying, man, it's just Chase Young is just a, a, a player. He's a man amongst boys. Our linebackers showed up yesterday. Mm-hmm. Defensive backs, they gave up a couple of, like, you know, long passes, but uh, didn't hurt us. Um, I mean, just all over a great A for the team, man, and, and coaching staff. They, yeah, they were phenomenal. The defense has gone from being improved over last year to, to being arguably the best defense in the country. It's, I think it's going to be hard to argue against that, actually. Um, they, they were, they, to, to your point, Chad, they were, they were spectacular yesterday. Um, what I noticed, so I'm looking at a drive chart here on kind of the advanced stats that they put out on Ohio State's website, their, their athletic website. And what, what impressed me about Ohio State in retrospect was, you know, they, they had some lousy field position uh, to start the game early in the game. And of course there were the weather conditions. And in the moment I was getting frustrated w- with the fact that they, they couldn't get anything going and they were very conservative, right? I think they, they didn't throw their first pass until the end of the first quarter. It was very late. I mean, they ran, they ran quite a bit to begin the game, but I think 
the field position they were staked to had had a lot to do with that. So their starting their opening possession started on the thirty, but then the ensuing possessions, the the two after that, they started at their own thirteen and at their own eleven yard line. And I heard Ryan Day say in the press conference that, you know, they had no choice but to be patient. And that's exactly what they were. And he said, believe me, it was funny in the press conference, he said, believe me, there's nobody more than me, uh, you know, that wants that it just hurts to have to punt the ball. Because they were, you know, it was, you could see, I don't want to say frustration, they had to really battle frustration uh, to, they obviously wanted to make something happen, but they stayed patient and they didn't, they didn't give in to the impulse to, to, to take a stupid risk. And, and I, I give them credit for that. And that's the maturity of a championship level team. You wait for your opportunities. And that's exactly what they did through the first quarter. Uh, Tim, to your point, you were there. You said the weather was terrible, especially through the first two quarters. And I thought they were smart to just wait out their opportunities and not take any unnecessary risks um, early in the game. And then when they started getting their opportunities toward the end of the first half, they took advantage. So that's one thing that stood out to me. And I think that is one of the trademarks of a championship team. You don't beat yourself and you wait for your opportunities. And that's exactly what they did in that game. That stood out to me. I think kind of just macro level, and we've mentioned this before on on a couple of previous pods, is we've seen this movie before, and it always ends badly for Wisconsin. You go back to the the 2014 Big Ten title game. Wisconsin comes in with the number two ranked defense in the country, the the nation's leading rusher in Melvin Gordon. And, you know, Gordon finishes with 76 yards on 26 carries, 2.9 yards per, per carry. Ezekiel Elliott goes for 220 yards and 20 carries, 59 zip, Ohio State. 27 Big Ten title game, or 2017 Big Ten title game, pretty much the same thing. Wisconsin, number one defense in the country, best running back in the Big Ten in Jonathan Taylor. He finishes with 41 yards on 15 carries. J.K. Dobbins outshines him 174 yards on 17 carries. And then yesterday, Wisconsin again comes in, number one defense in the country, best running back in the Big Ten, in air quotes. Jonathan Taylor held to 52 yards on 20 carries, 2.6 yards a pop. J.K. Dobbins outshines him again, 163 yards on 20 carries and two touchdowns. So we've seen this movie before. We saw it again yesterday. Very familiar. And I don't want to bag too much on Wisconsin. I think they're a good, solid Big Ten team. But they are complete and utter fraud when it comes to a playoff-level team. They're just not They're just not there. They just do not have the, the athletes and the talent on both sides of the ball. Um, I mean, there's a team. There are team you got to respect. They're a team probably going to win eight. They're probably going to win ten games this year. Probably going to win their bowl game. But they are a complete and utter fraud when it comes to playoff talk. Um, Page, was it Page? You were talking about J.K. Dobbins. I just wanted to back you up on something about about Dobbins and the kind of season he's having. Um, I think he's in 2015 Ezekiel Elliott territory right now. Now, Elliott had a huge year the year before, but he got most of his yards, well, not most, but a lot of his yards and big plays came in the postseason that year in the Big Ten title game and the two playoff games. He had a relatively modest regular season, but in 2015, he had a massive regular season. He finished with uh, over 1,800 yards rushing, 6.3 yards a pop, 206 yards receiving that year, and he accounted for 23 touchdowns. With four regular season games left, and at least one postseason game, Dobbins is at uh, 1,100 yards, 7.2 yards a pop, 132 yards receiving, and he's accounted for 13 touchdowns already. So I think he's headed for a really special year. I mean, Ezekiel Elliott territory, that's the stratosphere we're talking about. Um, any other? Yeah, yeah I, go I, ahead, I, Tim. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll tag on to that, too, because Paige made a very good observation, which is, you know, the... The flow of that first half was awful weather, trying to feel teams feeling each other out, trying to figure out what plays work, what don't. A bunch of drop balls that fields through perfectly. But the one guy making catches was Dobbins. Yeah. And, you know, the, the one guy helping them to get their feet underneath them in that first half uh, was, was Dobbins. It's huge. Um, and I... And I, yeah, I, I being there and kind of feeling the flow of the game and the flow of the crowd and everything, um, that was actually super, super important, I think, to them 
um, having some confidence and, and, you know, moving the ball. Um, Because there was the first three or four drives, Wisconsin was actually moving the ball a little bit better. I mean, there were a lot of punts back and forth, but um, without Dobbins making some of those plays, I think uh, Ohio State is in a worse position uh, than they would have been, and it may have affected their confidence. And you just never know what can go on in a game with the weather like that. Mm -hmm. Yep, good point. Yeah, well, and 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 he's your best friend, right? A running back that can catch the ball out of the backfield the way that Dobbins can uh, is your best friend in a game like that. You know where the the yards are coming. You know they're not coming easy, and the weather is really dictating. Um, you know how the game is played, and and he created some very easy throws. Uh, you know to get to get uh, fields out of um, you know out of hot water, and they went for big yards. Page as you pointed out. Um, but but just what I'm seeing out of J.K. Dobbins is much like Ezekiel Elliott, and he looks like a slightly miniature, like a sm- slightly smaller version of Ezekiel Elliott to me. Now he doesn't have quite the top end speed, but in terms of complete all around back as a runner, a, pa- a receiver out of the backfield, uh, he's pretty darn good in pass protection as well. He's a complete back, and uh, and kudos to Tony Alford by the way, because he's taken some heat. After losing Bijan Robinson yeah. and some of these uh, some of these uh, uh, high end recruits, um, I think he's done a hell of a job with the kids that he has, uh, starting with Dobbins, and then of course with Master Teague. To that point, Z, there's a, a kid who was in the state. There was a ton of five star recruits in the, uh, the shoe yesterday, and one of them was a five star running back from North Carolina by the name of Will Shipley, and he is just going off about how impressed and how much he loved Ohio State, Ryan Day, and, and Alford. So, you know, I, I think we're fine there. I mean, we've got Master Teague. We're backed up there for the next couple season. But, you know, this is a 2021 recruit. And, it's, you know, I mean, obviously there's a lot of time, but he says he's going to make a decision before the spring. Mm-hmm. So that would be a huge, like, kudos to, uh, to Alford to land that kid. He's got offers from – Everybody, Alabama, Clemson, Notre Dame, you know, all of them. So, hey, you know. Hey, it, and it ain't over yet for 2020. I mean, you know, who's to say Ohio State ain't going to flip some kid who's already committed somewhere else, right? I, I heard well, the, the Cleveland.com well, talk, guys talk about this, right? And, and the new beat writer that who's just joined from, from – he was covering Purdue last year. And he was like, oh, it's over. They won't get anybody. And, and Doug Lamer was kind of patting him on the head. He's like, okay – you're in Columbus now. This is Flipsville, right? The Ohio State does this all the time. They go in, they steal the other guy's girlfriend. They're like, look, Ohio State's the best looking guy in the class, right? They go in and they steal some other guy's girlfriend. It happens all the time. Trust me, I would not be surprised if they flip a kid, a, a top running back for the 2020 class. Paige, you were going to make a point. Go ahead. Well, yeah, and I don't know this for a fact, but didn't Robinson commit to Texas, and didn't our boy Tom Herman lose? To, TCU. Did they lose that game to Kansas yesterday? It was TCU. They lost, yeah. I think they lost by 10. Oh, yeah, they lost to TCU. Yeah? Yeah. Well, and they were yeah. in Oklahoma. Yeah. Sorry, what's that? Right. What's that, TG? I said they, they lost to TCU yesterday in Oklahoma two weeks ago. And they were life and death to beat Kansas last week at home. I think that was Yeah, yeah that's it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so we'll see hey, if B. I'll, John's. I'll, I'll tell you guys. Uh, I'll tell you guys an interesting anecdote, which is um, when I stay at the Blackwell, players come in. It's awesome. They, you know, they're super cool. They, they give you high fives. They walk up the stairs and they go up to this mezzanine level that's blocked off, and they have meetings and dinner and whatever. Uh, and then later on, they tend to come downstairs. Their families are downstairs and stuff. So that's how like I end up getting all these pictures and stuff. And. Uh, this time, while they were up there, they had just gone up there, and it was like maybe 10 minutes later, and there's a kid, and I'm going to try and find him, but he's definitely a big-time recruit, standing at the bottom of the stairs with his mom, and Brian Hartline comes down and gives the mom a giant hug, the kid a big hug, you know, puts his hands around both of them, takes them upstairs, and then, you know, an hour later, you know, when the meetings are over and everything upstairs, he he's basically escorts him back down, sees him at the front door, talks to him for like 20 minutes, and then sees him go. Like, th- I'm sure this kid is a four or five star wide receiver, and he was getting the full treatment from Heartline <laughs> <laughs> yeah. during that dinner. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Timmy, great picture of uh, 
Gordo and uh, Chase Young and uh, Master Tig, dude. Those were sweet. Yeah, that was that was awesome. He uh, he went right up to him, and Chase Young was totally cool. Awesome guy. Yeah. Did you say you also chatted with his folks? Did or did you just you just saw them from across the room? Or no, I, I chatted with his dad for a while, and if you guys can believe it, his dad is is actually bigger than Chase. He's yeah. taller, and he, and he's bigger. Wow. And uh, I think I might have texted this, but. Um, you know, those two were talking and I didn't interrupt him, but when Chase then went, went off, you know, I went up and said hello to Mr. Young and we were chatting and I said, I said, it's incredible, but I'm like, you know, you're still bigger than him. And he he said, he said something really funny, like, yeah, and he knows it. (laughs) (laughs) So, so Timmy on the, uh, on the, on the Fox post game. They actually interviewed uh, the young family. They interviewed his dad and his mom, and there was Urban Meyer with the the you know as part of the Fox broadcast team, arm around Chase Young's mom, and and she was talking about. She's like, I knew he was due for a game like this. She said she was practically crying in the stands, but you could see his dad. He was massive, huge, yeah, massive. Yeah, yeah Urban. Yeah, it was funny because Urban like like put his arm out and said, "Come over here," gave her a big hug, and she goes. Yeah, Larry Johnson gets all the the credit, but she's the one behind Chase Young. <laughs> great. Hey, if you're if you're the fan though of of Wisconsin in this case, and you're watching the post game, and you see Urban Meyer on the uh, on the broadcast team, and there he is, arm arm in arm with the parents of the kids who he recruited, who just laid waste to your team, and here's Meyer, who's supposed to be, you know, part of the the media now. I mean, the the Fox, you know, the Fox right now has become. The, the big noon kick, that's become like the, the best advertisement for Ohio State football <laughs> that you could yeah, find. Yeah, I don't, I don't know after that beating they were watching too much TV after the final score. <laughs> well, so, so let's talk a little bit about Chase Young. I just we got to put this into perspective, right? I mean, we were talking about this, uh, I think, at the, in the prediction pod. And Tansy was talking about how, you know, Ohio State brings multiple Heisman candidates into the game. And on Saturday, there'll be three you know, Fields, Dobbins, and then across the way for Wisconsin, you know, what's his face? God, how am I blanking? Jonathan Taylor. But I was like, well, hold on a second. There could be a third, and that's Chase Young. And then I immediately said, ah, but, you know, let's, be, let's face it. I mean, he, he's, there's no way he's, he's not even going to be a finalist. But after that performance on Saturday, I mean, you have all the, the talking heads, all the guys whose opinions matter, saying that he's a legitimate Heisman candidate now. Uh, 13 and a half sacks. He leads the country. Uh, what do we think about this, Paige? Well, I, I told you yesterday, Zach, this is reminds me of only two other defensive performances that I can remember. I'm not the football encyclopedia that you quite are, but <laughs> Ndamukong and Sue, yeah. for sure, yep. for, for Texas. Um, Nebraska. But then yeah. Clowney, Clowney, his sophomore year, yeah. right? He was just a wrecking ball that mm-hmm. year his you know junior year clearly he was uh you know had a uh, one foot out the door and ready to go to the pros which he should have but he was just so dominant that year but you know young it might even be more dominant and so i don't know you know how many defensive players have ever been invited to new york or you know not I, a I, lot. I mean no one ha- has ever won it um well but, Woodson geez, Charles it's Woodson gotta be a legit yeah. yeah yeah oh yeah Woodson good call um it's got to be a legitimate argument but then I think the thing Ohio State is got to be thinking about right to spin up this propaganda machine who are you going to back right yeah I mean I and I you, you know I don't know the inner workings of how these things go but you, there certainly is a machine that will get put into motion by the university and do they put their chips behind Chase Young or do they put them behind Dobbins? And, you know, I mean, Fields isn't out of the, the running either yeah. at this point. To, to me, it feels like Fields' year is probably going to come next year. His his Heisman push will probably come next year would be my guess. That just seems after eight games, it feels like that's kind of, you know, we'll see. I mean, he could he could explode in these last four games and have a big, you know, Big Ten title game, but... To me, I think you're right. I think you've identified the two guys. I think it's going to be either Dobbins or they're going to they're going to move Young forward. Chad, what are your thoughts on this? Well, I mean, I'll be honest with you, man. The, the whole QB Heisman thing is fucking old. 
Yeah. I mean, I'd love to see John, you know, break through and get the, get the Heisman. But, you know, at the end of the day, I really, I mean, it'd be great if one of those two got the Heisman, but I'd much rather have that big trophy at the end of the year. Than the I totally agree. Trophy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, so, so, so true, but think about this actually. So, uh, Jalen Hurts, bye bye Heisman. You're done, right? I would he's, think he's out of the equation now. And Tua, you know, can can you win the Tua's Heisman? out too because he's going to miss two games. So I mean, right. There's no way he could be it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I'm with you. We want the big prize at the end, but this is not an unrealistic thing. Now that you take those two guys out, um, I mean, who's legitimately left? Yeah, Trevor Lawrence has kind of had an up and down season. I don't think it's funny. His no one's really talking about him. I mean, it seems like it's Joe. It's Joe Burrow's uh, award to lose at this stage. I think he would probably has a sizable lead. Uh, Matt, I know you're not big on on Heisman or you know postseason awards, but do you have anything to contribute to this? Uh, all I will say is that it is the ultimate optics uh, system. So. The thing that white quarterbacks and running backs usually win is because they have the ball a lot. Mm -hmm. The chase would have to equal that level of performance that he did yesterday for most of the games or a shade under it at, at least. I mean, at the at worst. It's something that you're lining up in a line that's full of a lot of other people. Which one is? I mean, he's one of the braids. But you got to do something close to the ball. Mm -hmm. um, breaking through a tackle and not tackling someone is not really impressive. It's kind of like, wow, he's can't be blocked, Yeah, but you, he needs to make plays. And he, unfortunately on the defensive end of the thing, you don't make as many plays as people. He did, offense, so. he, he did yesterday though. He did yesterday though. He had did, four sacks and he, yeah. he, he had two strip sacks that turned into to points. Uh, but no, to your point, I, well, I, I mean, if, if we're talking about, you know, his Heisman campaign, it, he's got two uh, stat padding matchups these next two weeks. Well, after the bye, right, against Maryland and Rutgers. Christ, I mean, he could have 10 sacks between those two games if they play him. Yeah, <laughs> and, him and, and to all this talk, see, the Heisman is supposed to be the best player on the field who changes the game. Yeah. And Chase Young is that person right now. Yeah, but unfortunately the guy on the trophy is, has a ball in his hand. Yeah, that's true. No, you're right. You're right. <laughs> you're right. I mean, the, 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 yeah, the odds are stacked against him, especially because of the, the position that he plays. I totally get your point. You're, you're absolutely right. And that's why, you know, like what? There's, we've had one defensive player win the Heisman, uh, you know, since what, what, it was Charles Woodson. And I don't even know who it was before him. And that was yeah. Hugh seven. Green. Hugh Green was like second, uh, like in the seventies, I think. That's right, like that's seventy nine or something, right? With Pitt. Yeah, yeah. Tim, yeah. Tim, what what are your thoughts? Uh, do you have any anything to, to add to this? Not, not, not really. The Heisman is a trophy that's voted on by the press, which therefore makes it meaningless to me. Um, so I think it'd be interesting <laughs> to have a defensive player win it. But beyond that, I don't really give a fuck what the press says. I, I think more, exactly. more importantly, have you guys noticed Young's new sack celebration, what he does? No, what's that? He's, he's stolen Garrett Wilson's touchdown celebration where he mimics a referee making the reception signal. Did you guys notice that? Oh, he just, he, did. Yeah. He just rolled that yeah. out last, uh, this, this Saturday, which is pretty, pretty dope. You know, J Joey Bosa had the big shrug. He's got the little I, – I, I like that. I think uh, Garrett Wilson lent that to him. Or Chase Young took it. Probably is is more uh, more appropriate. Um, Paige, you had you had speaking of Garrett Wilson, you've already made this point. I said this a few weeks back. You know, since the opener, the only the only time Ohio State has had any production in the punt return game is it's been with Garrett Wilson, and he had a big return yesterday with Ohio State up seventeen seven, and the game still you know still in doubt, uh, and that set up Ohio State well inside uh, Wisconsin territory. Boom, they score, and pretty much that was game over. It's uh, What are we waiting for, okay? Garrett Wilson, full-time yeah. punt returner. Can we just – let's just do it and be done with it. I, I don't understand what yeah. we're waiting for there. Does anybody have any insight that, into that? Well, that remember that one um, punt that McCall caught, and he was oh, literally God. falling backwards. Oh. Like, that could have just been – A disaster. A hugely – yeah. It's just like, okay, I mean, idiots. just – <laughs> yeah, let's move on. 
from that. But the other thing, not not to change gears, I totally agree with you, Zach, but um, I don't know how we can finish this pod without a little praise for Olave, who awesome. is clearly yeah. separated himself, like the go-to guy. Yep. Um, I mean, we've got good receivers. We've got five of them. Um, but my God, that guy is, He's just amazing. He had one of those drops. Gallagher mentioned that, you know, to start the game. But, Jesus, he didn't drop anything after that. And uh, it certainly seems like Fields is looking for him more and more. Yeah. And, you know, I think it's good to have some alpha guys, right, you know, when we start to this stretch run, right, you know, who are guys that are just you can depend on? And Alave, man, he's just he's almost automatic at this point. Yeah. yeah, I love it too. Because the kid was only a three-star recruit coming out of high school. I love it. He's been everything that you could, you would want to. If you're building a wide receiver in a lab, right? I mean, maybe the one thing he lacks is a little bit of size, but he's got all the other attributes and intangibles. He finished with seven catches for 93 yards and two touchdowns. And right, he, he the the the. the the balls that he did catch were just perfectly timed. It seemed they were right when Ohio State needed them. And uh, I, I, yeah, I mean, I love the kid, and it's that's a great story. I mean, those are the types of, you have to have at least a couple of those guys emerge from three-star land, right? The kind of afterthoughts who, you know, come to the program, maybe they get a they get a late scholarship at one of the camps or, you know, in the case of Olave, I believe they were they were there to, to look at his teammate, right? I don't. I don't remember the whole story, but Ohio State had sent some some coaches to look at one of Olave's teammates, and they were like, "Wow, I think it was this a day. Guy? It was a day, yeah." So yeah, they, I think it was. Yeah, he was. He's he's everything you would hope and what you would need. And and again, I kind of go back to what Jonah Booker had said. He he did. Uh, he he had a text uh, during the Northwestern game. He calls him Terry Glenn Light. Um. And, and I don't think he quite has Terry Glenn's top-end speed, and he's certainly not going to get the volume of targets that Glenn did, you know, back in 95. But he does have a knack for, a big, for the big play, for the big moment. He shines when the, the lights are the brightest and when Ohio State needs him the most. Um, I, I, he is a gamer, and, and they can deploy him in a number of different areas. I, I'm with you, Paige. He's been, he's been fantastic. And, and you know the thing, Z's, what's beautiful about that. So you, you go into, like, you know, better weather games over the next, you know, Penn State, Michigan, for a prime example. Mm-hmm. And we still have Victor and, like, you know, K.J. Hill mm-hmm. and Mac and Reich. I mean, we have, like, we're just so deep at receiver. And it's just it's just such a beautiful thing. Yeah. Hey, I, I wanted to ask Gallagher uh, something. Would, Timmy, did you stay until, like, mid? did you stay all the way till the end of the game? Yep. So what what was the Ohio State crowd doing when they fu- when they started fucking playing jump around? <laughs> yeah. Fucking with Tom's fucking too. Uh well that's a pretty good question because uh I think you probably read right Wisconsin players weren't too happy about that and what I didn't know is that they did it last week at Illinois too. Yeah. I think towards the end of the game. <laughs> um, you, you know, the, the look, the crowd was totally into it. Um, a bunch of people had left at that point. And so, you know, the stadium was probably like two thirds full, but the two thirds that were there were totally into it. I mean, it's just a, it's a great song. It's a great tradition, you know, give it to Wisconsin for coming up with it first, but, uh, the South yeah, stands awesome. and then the old block O on the other side at the closed end were just, fucking going off and that was making everybody else in the stadium go off oh, we would, I'm sure you were even you i know you don't have the band's best dance moves to me but i'm sure you were moving your body a little bit where you dude all i gotta do is jump up and down i can even do that <laughs> um you know i thought it was a, a chad i think you had mentioned the line ba- the play of the linebackers and I thought this was certainly a game for the tough Borlands and the Pete Warners. I thought Pete Warner was very good. You know, Wisconsin's got a good tight end, and we didn't really hear from him yeah. yesterday. And, and credit to Pete Warner. He's a good linebacker in coverage. And um, uh, I, thought, uh, I, I thought Justin Hilliard had a nice game. How about Justin Hilliard, the senior? Yeah, man. What that. From the depths, you know, like the forgotten. Yeah, he had a big tackle for loss on Jonathan <laughs> Taylor for for a six yard loss, 
And and I wonder if maybe Baron Browning is still not quite himself, which is why we saw a little bit more of Justin Hilliard in this game. He came he, he came in early. I remember seeing him early in, in one of the first two Wisconsin says uh, one of their first two possessions. Uh, he was good. The linebackers were good. And and if there was you know a game on the schedule that would be for the tough Borlands and the Justin Hilliards, it would certainly be this game. I thought Damon. I thought Damon Arnett was good yesterday. Now I know he got oh, beat. He was fantastic. He got beat on the long ball, but that was a hell of a throw and a hell of a catch. And 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 honestly, he had good coverage on that play. I think he he got his arm in there, the arm with the cast on it, if I'm not mistaken. And it just it was just a good throw. And what was funny about it is Quentin Cef, uh, Cephas got up, Quintez Cephas got up and started jawing at him. And on the very next play, well, first of all, he got, he's, he got up and started jawing at him. I think at that point it was 31-7. And I said to my father-in-law, does he know what the score is? Did he look at the scoreboard? And then, <laughs> and then on the very next play, Chase Young has another strip sack on Jack Cohn that gets returned by Pete Warner to, to, pretty, snuff, to pretty much snuff out you know, that, uh, that scoring threat by Wisconsin. But I th- thought the linebackers were good. And I thought the yeah, interior— Yeah, made a good— Sorry, go ahead, Chad. Oh, sorry, Sorry, Z. I think Sloaner made a good point earlier in the week, like we were texting back and forth. He said, I'd much rather have Browning 100% for Penn State and Michigan. So maybe they're just like trying to test him out and see yep. if he was, yep. you know, ready to go. But, mm-hmm. uh, oh, and on, on another note of that, like, Z, how was Boys Week? Did you guys go out and tear it up the strip club this week <laughs> in the fun ball? We, we did head out. Yeah, we head out a couple times. Yeah, I, kudos to my, to my father in law. He came in, he stepped up big. Uh, we have, you know, we have two older dogs and we have a tripod cat, you know, a three-legged cat. They just need a lot of care. And one of our two dogs has not been doing so well. So my wife left for, you know, she really needed a girl's week. You know, she goes and goes back to Michigan and sees her girlfriends. So she took off for a week. My father-in-law came up and took care of the dogs during the day while I was at work because obviously I don't have much schedule flexibility with this new job. He showed up. He had a cold. Like he was down for the count. He was sick as a dog, but totally stepped up and took care of the dogs. And yeah, we uh, you know yesterday we we uh, we had a few cold ones uh, during the game and during during the whole you know schedule of games. So it was good. He was kudos to nice. him. He, he played well, that- hurt. I, I told Sloaner he played hurt like Justin Fields did in the fourth quarter. So I give him uh, <laughs> I give him huge kudos for that. Guys, any other thoughts from uh, from the Wisconsin game? Any other observations? Anything you guys wanted to point out that maybe we we haven't we've missed? I love seeing Ryan Day on the sidelines with that towel around his neck, with just a pissed off look the entire fucking game. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Did you see him mixing it up with the team pregame, getting in the middle of the scrum there, pushing guys around, smacking guys on the oh, helmet? Yeah, dude. Awesome. yeah, yeah. I I think he, again he's got this nice guy demeanor in in the press conferences and uh, i think there's a fire there that you don't always see um you know when he's in in the public eye but i think behind closed doors i think that guy's a lion and and i you know and and you're seeing it in the way that his team has played all season long he is he's a lion man um i I was going to make one other point about the interior of the defensive line uh does it is it me or does it seem like tommy togiai is starting to make a name for himself. He's starting to stand out. Um, Beast. I, I've seen him a couple times. Just again, when Ohio State wants to clog up the middle of of that uh, of the line and shut down the, the run, we saw it against Northwestern. Togiai is kind of their go-to guy. Um, he's he's a guy that I think he's poised to have a huge junior season next year. Um, and I and I thought Davon Hamilton was excellent on, on the interior. Paige, you had already mentioned uh, previously. You mentioned um, our guy. Sorry, Landers. Landers. Landers, Landers was fantastic as well. Uh, was, again, Landers is another guy who's got a great porno name. Um, we, we've got a few of those guys. <laughs> on the, Steel Chambers is another one. Uh, there's a bunch of them. So. All right. Well, hey, if, if you guys are, if we said everything uh, we've needed to say about Wisconsin, we picked all the meat off that bone. There was another game that we were all keeping a watchful eye on, and that was Michigan Notre Dame. And um, I was actually pretty surprised at the result. I did not see a Michigan blowout coming. Chad, you had Michigan winning that game. Matt, you had w- Michigan winning that game. Paige, you and I talked just, well, er, midday. I know you didn't give a prediction on the last prediction pod, but I think you had Michigan winning that game at least by 10. 
So I was way off on that one. Um, Paige, what did you see yesterday out of that Michigan Notre Dame game that stood out to you? Well, well, I, I think it was a benefit. Um, and t- Tim kind of mentioned this with the weather. Um, and I was, you know, at first I was like, Ugh, noon start for the Wisconsin game, but in bad weather like that, uh, I was kind of happy that game was uh, early or in the day as opposed to the Michigan game. My God, I mean, yeah, it's just coming down in, in buckets. But, you know, it, mine was more, um, you know, I, I well, I, I take that back. I didn't see the first half of the Michigan-Penn State game, but I did watch the second half, and Michigan was clearly the better team. Now, Sloaner, that was a funny line. You're like, yeah, six and a half games in. Thanks for finally showing up, guys. But <laughs> they they carried it over. And their defense, they've got some dudes that, you know, um, that can play are pretty nasty. And so, you know, I'm not, you know, jumping on the, the Michigan bandwagon or anything. I wasn't a huge believer in Georgia, you know, and you can always play, well, they beat these guys. And then, you know, or Notre Dame, I mean, they, get, you know, got beat by – uh, Georgia, and then, you know, Georgia loses to South Carolina. But I just kind of thought at home, that that weather, and, you know, maybe they did figure a few things out mm. against Penn State that, mm. you know, Michigan would probably pull that game out. And you know what? That's good for us. I want them to get confident. I want that game to be, you know, um, you know, Michigan to be as highly regarded as they can when they come in and they take their – proper beat down just like Wisconsin does. So I think that result worked out perfectly for us. Michigan, 57 rushing attempts in that game yesterday for 303 yards. Um, wow. Yeah, that game was Hassan, Hassan Haskins led them in rushing with 149 yards. Zach Charbonnet had 74 on the ground on 15 carries. Yeah, it was... Um, well, I guess it was one of those games, right? Nobody was really going to put it in the air too much. Shea Patterson, 6 of 12 for 100 yards. Uh, he threw two touchdown passes, no interceptions. Um, yeah, hey, I mean, I, I, kudos to Michigan. Uh, they did not look good last week. They certainly did seem to find themselves in the second half. I scoffed at that idea. Chad, actually, you, you pointed that out uh, on the prediction pod, or maybe it was last week's pod. You pointed out that you felt that Michigan had had found something in the second half, and I kind of scoffed at that, but maybe you were right about it. What did you see yesterday? I mean, I think they, like, you know, I think in that Penn State game, you know, they found an offense that was probably there. um, But, you know, again, like, going back to, like, what Tim has, you know, has been saying, like, I mean, our athletes are much better than that. But, I mean, they do have some, some talent on that team. And I think, they might have given that uh, offensive coordinator, the guy from Bama, a little bit more uh, leeway, uh, you know, on the chain. <laughs> and, you know, I think they're starting to, you know, run some plays that they, they the first six, seven weeks of the season they didn't do. So, I mean, you know, am I at all worried about them? No. But like Paige said, I, I want them to – Went out convincingly until we go up to Ann Arbor and kick their ass again. So that's, you know. (laughs) All right. Tim, did you happen to catch any of that game after the Ohio State game yesterday? Yeah, I saw saw it, uh, or most of it anyway. Um, I don't know. I mean, I'm kind of torn on, you know, is Michigan really improving or is no was Notre Dame just actually pretty fucking horrible and they played a good game against Georgia? Yeah. Um, yeah. It's probably a little bit of both and uh, you know as it always is. Uh Michigan does seem to be uh if nothing else, you know, kind of getting more confidence and at least playing like a team with some, with some toughness. Um you know, I don't know. I just felt like when when Illinois came back and almost took the lead in that game, um, I thought Illinois was going to win that game, and you know Michigan went on a run, um, and then you know, uh, yeah, the second half of Penn State they played better, and then here, you know, I don't know, I, I'm I'm not I'm not one to give Michigan a lot of credit for anything, so I think the weather, I think of uh, an inferior opponent who you know just didn't play that well in the weather. I mean, like you just said, Zach, they they ran the ball 55 times or whatever. Well, you know, great. You can run the ball against a bad defense. Um, 
Yeah. You know, I, I don't know if that's that, that big of a deal. So, um, you know, it's fine. Uh, they probably win the rest of their games, or at least they should. Uh, and they'll, they'll be playing with a lot of confidence when we go up there. And, you know, when we destroy them again, then, you know, <laughs> we'll be back to asking if they're going to keep Arbaugh next year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I... I um... I, I thought the weather was was a, a huge benefit to to Michigan, and and it, and I'd wonder how maybe the game would have played out a little differently if if it weren't a torrential, like raining, you know, biblical proportions yesterday. It was it was crazy. And Matt, did you have an opportunity to catch any of that game yesterday? And if you did, what what did you yeah, see? Yeah, I mean, better doesn't mean good. I yeah, mean, Rucker, Rutgers won yesterday too. <laughs> Um, <laughs> that basically summarizes it for me. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 go ahead, Chad. Is Brian Kelly going to get fired, though, man. I mean, that guy is like now 1 in 20 against ranked teams. I mean, he's in the hardball. It's like, like, when are they going to get rid of that guy? Well, they just made the playoff last year and went undefeated in the regular season. I think that'll probably. He's got a ways to go yet, I would think, before they'd think about firing him. Yeah, I, I was surprised. I, I, I was surprised because I, uh, Notre Dame went to Athens and, and played with the Bulldogs. Uh, you know, it was, they had an opportunity to win that game. And um, I, I, was, I, I had underestimated him, or so I thought at the time. And I remember we talked about that game when it happened on this pod. Uh, I guess one question I have is, what does it say about Georgia? Uh, that Notre Dame was able to play them tooth and nail, um, you know, uh, the way that they did, and then they go to Michigan and completely shit the bed uh, like they had never seen rain. I mean, if I'm not mistaken, Notre Dame is in the Midwest too, right? They get shitty weather in Indiana. Is it? Is, I mean, did, did they not have any inkling that it was going to rain or the weather would suck? I was very surprised that they were that hapless and punchless in that game. I thought they were a better team than that. Uh, it was a very strange result. I mean, I, I had Notre Dame winning that game by a couple of touchdowns. Tim, I was with you, man. I thought I thought Michigan was in trouble. Paige, as you like to say, you know, I'm sticking with the trend until I see something differently. And the trend up through that game was that Michigan shows up late for these games. They find themselves down by several scores before they start playing to their to their abilities. But, you know, that was obviously not what happened last night. So we'll see. Well, and the, the, the dumbest, play of the year to that Notre Dame guy who uh, after they had blocked the punt, right, and he goes and tries <laughs> to jump on the ball very early yeah. in the first quarter. That was a huge, huge play, yeah. right? You know, and, and then the other thing, you made a good point, Zach, you know, um, with Harbaugh, and uh, that's exactly the kind of football Harbaugh wants to play, yeah. right? I mean, they run the ball 55 times, so I guess it's not that surprising that they won that game. It's surprising how bad Notre Dame was. But, you know, I mean, Sloaner, you're right. Better is not good, so not worried at all. Good for Michigan. Yeah, uh, I mean, uh, Gaddis, I mean, but, you know, Harbaugh probably saw the weather forecast and just said, Gaddis, you got the night off if you want. You you don't even have to show up. I got it from here. (laughs) 55 carries, you know, 5.5 yards a carry. Um, yeah, strange game, uh, but you know, there was weather all over the country and it seemed to have a bearing on, you know, an effect on, on, on everything. Oklahoma goes down. We talked a little bit about that over text. Um, I was surprised by that. I didn't think there was anybody in the big 12 that could play with Oklahoma. I thought actually of, of the playoff contenders, I thought Oklahoma and Clemson in the ACC would go pretty much uncontested through their conference schedule. I was wrong about that. And now, you know, looking at what Oklahoma has left on that schedule, I think they have Iowa State left to go and, and some other games that now look a little more harrowing for them. Um, so, it, so you know, maybe they're out of the mix. Now, what that does, Oklahoma losing, is that would seem to open the door up for a second SEC team, which makes me – that just made me throw up in my mouth a little bit. Um, but <laughs> so we'll see. A lot of football left to be played, a lot of big games left to go, but uh, – I, I was surprised. I, I, was, I did not realize. I, I just I did not see that coming either. Kansas State, I know they're tough in Manhattan, but I, I, I didn't see any of that game. Did any of you guys watch any of the Oklahoma-Kansas uh, State game at all? No, didn't nope. see it. No? Okay. So we got a bye week coming up. It looks like it's, um, you know, our second bye. 
I think this is the first time we've had two bye weeks in a season since the 2013 season. And if I'm not mistaken, that 2013 team, hey, they looked about as good, not quite as good, but about as good as this team. And then they had that second bye, and they came out of that second bye totally flat, and they had a really shitty, lousy performance against an overmatched team in Illinois that year. And then they had the game the following year, or the following week against Michigan that was way too close for comfort. I don't see that happening in this case, you know, with this team. And in fact, I think that this buy seems to come at a really good time. I mean, you had Justin Fields. To me, it looks like he banged up. He, he hit his tailbone on that touchdown run. Some other guys that could clearly use some rest. Um, so another what would seem to be a pretty well-timed buy. And then we got two stat padding games against Maryland and, and Rutgers before we get down to the nitty gritty with, with the home game at Penn State and Michigan. Um, I don't know, guys. What do you think? I think we've, we've covered pretty much everything that, that's of any significance to Ohio State. Did I miss anything? Let me know if I did. All right. No, next weekend. Nope. Yeah, next weekend. Make some plans next weekend. You know, go to the pumpkin patch or, well, Halloween will be over by then. I don't know. Whatever. Go, ho- go holiday shopping. <laughs> I mean. Chad, next... Chad and I have plans. Yeah, uh, yeah. Oh, Chad. Really? Chad, what are you, are you going to Denver? Oh, yeah, dude. We're going to see Dead Mouse on Saturday night at Red Rocks. No way. Red Rocks. Yes. <laughs> yeah, baby. <laughs> see, yeah. All right. I got to do something like that. I don't know. Yeah, because I think the, the slate <laughs> next week, you've got pretty much all the top teams are sitting next week out. With Jackson. No way. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. yeah. It's going to be it's gonna be cold. But it's going to be fun. <laughs> last, last show of the year at Red Rocks, Dead Mouse. Wow. Friday and Saturday night, Plumber and I will be there. <laughs> yeah. Very nice. Enjoy that, fellas. Well, hey, guys, listen, thanks for making the time. It was a really good effort for Sunday. We're just over an hour. Uh, Tim, uh, thanks for, uh, for, for showing up, uh, you know, after a, a, long, uh, a long flight after the Ohio State game. Um, we will, I guess, we'll, do we want to do a prediction pod or are we going to take the middle of the week off? I guess we can figure that out later. Um, anyway, yeah, yeah. figure it out later. Figure it out later. Well, well, later. well if, if oh, you LSU like, you and Alabama are playing next weekend, aren't they? No, they're they're off. I think they don't play till the ninth. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh. I'm uh, yeah. I'm going to be running at the community college a course on proper prediction, <laughs> predicting teams and stores. So if you guys want to swing by and get some pointers, I'll, I'll, uh, nice. I'll, I'll, you guys won't have to. You guys won't have to pay. <laughs> <laughs> it, maybe maybe Tim and I will take that course. Uh, I, we, we, we could probably use it after after the Michigan pick or the, the Notre Dame pick. All right, fellas. Hey, thanks for making the time, boys. Uh, we will talk uh, All right, sometime in the next couple All weeks. Right. All right, go Bucks. Right, go Bucks. Always right. pleasure. Go Bucks, you boys. <laughs>